I'm so used to um, interviewing people. So I went on uh, like a couple of my friends' podcasts and talked to them, but I got to get more comfortable talking to people and being interviewed instead of being the person to interview the other person. So that's why I reached out. I mean, it's just if you be yourself, you don't really have to prepare, you know what I'm saying? Unless you're trying to give off an image and, and be politically politically correct all the time. You gotta it's watch just what you me telling my story and saying the right things and getting out the right message of the story and getting straight to the point. Like, I could ask you questions and get straight to the point. That's easy. But being able to tell my story and make it simple <laughs> and not ramble, that's what I'm learning. Yeah. That's Okay, um, I guess we're going to start it off with, um, is it cool if the interview go up on all my social media platforms? Yeah. And like, if I say something you don't like, you know what I'm saying, you can pass. So, um, Do this need to be out the way? I don't think it's in there. Uh, yeah, you out the way. Okay. All right, literally, there's no pressure. I'm your host, Bank on Bug. And we got a special guest. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hey, 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 y'all. It's Summer Christiana of More Than Network. Okay, so um, I guess we'll start it off like tell everybody where you originally from. Okay, so I'm. A, you want me to look at you or the camera? <laughs> okay, um, I'm originally from Michigan, but I've been in Georgia since 2010 ish. Um, I was born in Port Huron, not Detroit. <laughs> everybody says Detroit when they uh, hear Michigan, but Port Huron is like the outskirts. So I grew up in the Upper Peninsula, where majority of not our cousins are. <laughs> so when I came down here, it was like a culture shock to see people like me. So yeah, that's it for them. Yeah, I lived up north, like it's like mainly white people from uh -huh. there, especially in like, the small <laughs> area. Okay, so did you grow up both of your parents? I did. Um, my mom, she had me when she was young. She was 14. Uh, my dad, I think he was a couple years older than her. Both of my parents, I grew up with both of them in my life, but my father, he went off to the military. So I mainly stay with my mom and just visit my dad like through the summers and stuff like that. So but we, both of my parents are actively in my life. Okay, so y'all like really close, like um, like you tell me everything. Not everything, <laughs> but we're close enough to the point where I call them if I need advice about anything. If I'm going through something, I could trust and be able to tell them and go to them about that. So we're close. We have a good. So what um something he told you like just being like good advice uh as far as like dealing with like men? Oh, that's a good one. My dad, he's a retired Marine, so he's reserved. So like that he has an emotional like wall. <laughs> but as far as like dealing with men, we don't even get on that topic too much. Like I talked to him about a little bit of stuff, but my dad told me, I don't want to meet the man until you're about to marry him. And that's just how I've been. But I'll be introducing them and asking for advice and stuff like that. But as far as, like, advice on men, we more so talk about, like, his experiences, um, being married and going through a divorce. So I kind of learn from what he had going on. And sometimes I come to him for advice about little things, but not too much. <laughs> so you, um, I guess, so you feel like you get married this trip? Say it again. Uh, this go around with your boyfriend like you feel like y'all get married i mean if that's in the line yeah that's that's gonna happen <laughs> i don't date to just date i date for a purpose and the purpose is to get married so yeah so you know um some women don't believe in like saying that real early do you kind of see it like oh for instance you know? i believe speaking things into existence um we've known each other long enough it's not like prematurely I'm saying it's like we've had these types of discussions and conversations so it's not you can you speak anything into existence so <laughs> no it's not that oh I shouldn't talk about this you can talk about it okay so uh, what would you say like the most traumatic experience you had before 18 that is such a good question oh that's the question that's gonna make me think ask it again <laughs> <laughs> the most traumatic experience you had before the age of 18. Before 18, it would have to be getting my cycle. And we both grown, so I'm going to get a little personal. But, <laughs> but yeah, getting my cycle because that's like your quote unquote womanhood, you know? So that's something that follows you throughout your life. <laughs> so I think that was most traumatic because it's something that's going to happen every month. So I'm saying, like, was it like in public or something or like. You mean embarrassing? Yeah. 
Okay, embarrassing and traumatic. That's that's two different things. No, I'm saying when you got your cycle. Oh no no no! It was at the house. It was just coming of age. It was like oh I'm growing up, you know. <laughs> so it it was that type of thing when I got my cycle. But I was at the house. Uh, luckily, it wasn't nothing too dramatic or terrifying because oh that that would have been too embarrassing. But yeah, that's a, that's a sacred moment. Stuff like that shouldn't happen <laughs> out in public. Okay, um, I guess something you got called crazy for, but later on it turned out to be true. Mm, I don't know anything in particular. Me and my friends, we would joke about stuff a lot, and then later on it would come back around that something was true, and I was joking about it. So maybe something like that, but I can't name anything in particular. Okay, so I guess um I guess as a friend, like should you go against everything your friend go against? No. You your own person. I would never agree to go up against something just because somebody else is. Like a lot of the things that I stand on I have reasoning for. And just because I stand on something don't mean that you need to, he need to, or the next person need to. You should have your own reasoning. You have one person. So you don't believe in, I guess you were never like in cliques or whatever, like where you have to be against that side, like, you mm -hmm. know? <laughs> I had small friend groups. Um, in school, like growing up, I was a popular kid, but I wasn't the popular kid in the cliques. Everybody knew who I was, but they didn't know about me because I wasn't necessarily out like that. You know what I mean? Like I had my groups of people here and there and I was cool with everybody, but I don't, people are fake. I don't like people being fake in my face and stuff like that. So I was cool with everybody, but I never clicked up, you know? Okay, speaking of fake, so what, who do you feel like uh, is the fakest person like you done ran into like in the industry so far? Oh, that's a good question. Some people had their days. So I ain't gonna call nobody necessarily fake, but the media industry is definitely full of fake people. Um, posers, wannabes, uh, like we just talked about, people that think they popping, but they, they not that, like, it, it's a lot of fake people in the industry. I can't put a name to nobody in particular, because I don't keep people like that around me, so they, back there, I didn't forgot about them, you know what I mean? I know it down and keep it that way, but it ain't nobody, I'm like, oh, that person fake. <laughs> so ain't nobody ever, like, got you out of some money, like, saying they can do something for you? I do my research on a lot of stuff, so especially when I'm putting money towards it. So no, nah. <laughs> nobody got me out of money. Um, a lot, a lot of things when I first started off um, modeling, a lot of photographers would be like creepy and try to reach out and do photo shoots, and I'd be like, okay, cool. Do you have a concept that you're thinking about? Like I'm down, I like your work. Then they'd be like, oh, I want to do lingerie or I want to do uh, what is it, boudoir photo shoot. Oh no, I'm not doing that. Like you can look on my page. I don't do stuff like that. Like that's not even up my alley. So, a lot of creepy photographers or like men in the industry, and I'm not just saying only men are bad in the industry because it's women as well. But that that was my first like instance where somebody tried it, something like that. Yeah, photographers they always brag about all the girls they be fucking. Uh huh. Yeah. <laughs> Straight up. Okay. Um, a prayer that God answer like answer faster than normal. That's a good question. I don't really have one in particular. Like, God answered all my prayers at the right time. <laughs> so, I mean, I pray every morning. Um, finding my passion in media, that was really important to me. I prayed to him while I was in college about finding my passion, um, figuring out what I would really do with my life. Because I was, after high school, I went straight to college. So it wasn't no time in between where I could like idle and figure, you know, stuff out. It was more so I went to college, did my um, prereqs and stuff like that, and then found my passion. So I think finding my passion with media, that was really a prayer that he answered quickly. So you feel like you was pressured to, like your dad didn't tell you to chill for a minute or you was just like gone go to college? My mom and dad, they, wanted, they both wanted me to go to college. Um, once I was in college, I spoke to my mom about it, and she was like, you didn't have to go to college. She was like, you didn't have a plan, like, set up. So she wanted me to go to college because I didn't have, like, 
now I have my business, uh, well, businesses, I have that, but earlier down, I didn't know what I wanted to do. So with me having no idea what I wanted to do in particular, college was the best option. And I'm glad that she, you know, but that both of them pushed that, but yeah, college was my go-to. So like, um, you doing media, like, is it a question that you like ask that like kind of make it awkward for you? I mean, I guess you kind of, kind of like stay like on the lighter side or you try to dig deep. It depends. I have to make my guests comfortable. That's my big thing for me. So like awkward silence and stuff like that. I try to fill that up before I get my guests to come on the show or do an interview or anything like that, I sit down with them and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation just to kind of catch their vibe, see how deep I could go with them, and I just prep them for what's going to happen because a lot of people, they'll be nervous before they go into an interview. So if I just had that sit down one-on-one, -on -one, my vibe chill. Like, <laughs> I'm fun, I'm cool, like, it's nothing too heavy or too harsh. So I walk them through and kind of prepare them for what's going on. And then by there, Depending on what they tell me, that's when I dig deep. But I let them know, you know, just like you said, if it's too deep, we can pass questions. It's nothing like that. I don't want to put too much pressure, but I want to know what the real is. I'm saying, have you ever had somebody who, like, uh, request that you take it down and hand you down after you do? Mm -mm. No, because I can read people pretty well as I'm going on. Body language, all the stuff they taught me in college, body language, paying attention to what they got going on, it's, I can pay attention to that. <laughs> Yeah, no crazy right. stories or nothing like that. Yeah, I just had people agree to it, then they'll like switch it up. They'll say I didn't agree to it while you put it out. Oh. And that's you, why I started saying it. On, yeah. I, I would cut that part out where they agree to it. Uh -huh. So I just started keeping it in with the people. <laughs> you say we ain't having no issue. You know what? That's actually really smart. I might need to do that, but yeah. <laughs> Instead of having some ring, because like when YouTube hit me up, I just clicked it and sent them that part. Mm. And they left it alone. That's actually really smart. And I feel like, do you feel like as men, y'all have it harder in the industry as far as like allegations and stuff like that? Like you, why, what was your reasoning for doing that? What you mean? Why did you start saying that? In the beginning of the stuff. Oh, this, well, I mean, I, just, I probably had, it's, it might be closer to 20. People there hit me up maybe like the day after. I mean, I, it was a person like, it was like 15 minutes after they left. They said, hey, uh, could you take that down? Because uh, like, we don't like that part. They got the car and somebody said something to them. <laughs> yeah, sometimes it's like yeah. they, somebody will see it. And then sometimes they'll come with somebody and they'll mm. discuss it and be like, I don't like this yeah. shit. So I was like, yeah, we got to. Gotta put that in there. Do you feel like more as a male that you have to do that though, or it's kind of just? I mean, I just have to because like I don't be want my YouTube to get strikes. Oh, yeah. so. I get you. But um, yeah, it's yeah, it's the best thing to do though. Mm -hmm. Instead of the reading contract that people try to do, just mm -hmm. get, them on get them on video. Okay, um, something you dish out, but you can't take it, um, past or present. I'm still dealing with um, rejection. I overcame that a lot, but for a while, rejection, um, being told what to do, I'm a Leo. <laughs> so by nature, we're bossy, but I'm learning how to um, listen to others and overcome that. Yeah, Leo's a cool one, uh, girl, a Leo. <laughs> I think a Leo, too. Oh, cool. Yeah. Okay, um... A time someone crossed you and a person uh, started moving like you crossed them. Ooh. Okay. So I had um, a best friend. And she was messing with someone that I had messed with prior in the past. And she ended up coming out and telling me. But when she told me, it wasn't, it wasn't like the proper way to tell somebody. So when I ended up, I, I got off the phone with her, but when I ended up telling her how I felt, it did come out in the wrong way. But the way she moved after that was strange to me because it's like, you messed up. Why are you acting like I messed up doing something? You know what I mean? So I think that that would have to have been the situation. Um, Yeah, that was a deep question. I could go on, but I'm going to 
Yeah, that's a deep question. I haven't even talked about that with her. We don't even talk no more, so I don't even want to put this out. Oh, like she, she in Georgia? Oh, um, yeah, she's still in Georgia. Yeah. Okay. We grew up together. Okay, um, this is a quote. They say, have you ever smoked uh, with someone and you started laughing because they was ugly? <laughs> Uh, nine out of ten, yeah. A lot of people I went to college with was ugly, <laughs> and we were smoking together, so yeah, that's that's definitely, especially <laughs> he cracking up laughing back there. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> I like that one. That's fun. Yeah, folks be ugly or oh, they do something. I'll be like, you stupid, you ugly. Yeah, <laughs> that happened a lot. <laughs> I start when I seen the quote. I started laughing. Yeah, I, like, I got to give me that one. So uh, I guess like give me your uh, good and uh, bad experience you had with like getting high. Mm, I don't want to go too deep into that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I guess what do you miss most about um, being a kid? Not paying bills. <laughs> not paying bills. Having freedom of not working. I had to clean up when I was little, but that bills is the big one. With me, I, I was scared to grow up. I remember my homecoming for... um. My, my like junior homecoming or something like that in middle school, I cried while I was getting my hair done because I was like, I don't want to grow up. <laughs> but yeah, growing up, that just growing up too fast, that was um, that was something that I had to deal with. You got a memorable moment of like of your dad like doing something for you or like a daddy daughter day or something. Most recently, my dad just bought me an Apple Watch. I don't really ask my parents for much. Like I'm older now, but that was something that really. It was like, oh, okay, you paying attention to me because it was something simple. I just asked like the dome, like if I get it, I get it. If I don't, I don't. But I asked him for it, and then next time I came over, he surprised me and got it. So that was something um, that was off the blue that I could think of right now. So what's what's a quality? In your dad, that your man, he gotta have. I want to feel protected. It's not necessarily a quality in my father. I don't look for characteristics or qualities in my dad and a man. I look for characteristics and qualities that make me feel secure. So, I that's that's a must. I have to feel protected. I have to feel supported. My dad, he does he does well with supporting me as far as like my career and things like that. Um, I have to feel loved, cared for, but being protected is one of the the main things that I look for. Okay. So, do you feel like you cry more as an adult, adult, or more as a kid? An adult that I can remember. Other, other stuff that you cry about when you're a kid, like if your parents tell you you can't go to the movies. That's something simple. But as an adult, you crying about real stuff. <laughs> so you crying because your heart broke. You crying because you tired. You crying happy tears, maybe even that. So definitely as an adult, what you think? Um, you probably cry more as an as an adult. Mm -hmm. I mean, I guess it depends on what kind of child you could. Yeah. Have. Oh, that's true. I that does a come into factor. So mm -hmm. I wasn't really crying that much. Except for whoopings for real. Oh, uh, I didn't even get whoopings when I was a kid. Yeah. My mom, she might have hit me twice. But that wasn't even like whoopings hit. And I was like a teenager by then. But yeah, she used to take my stuff and put me on punishment. So I used to be sitting in the room for a couple weeks with nothing. That worked. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was the only child on her side. But the whooping stop when you get like 11, 12. And then you just be standing there. And your mom hits you hard as she can. They, they'll just stop being like See, my mom, when she hit me, it didn't hurt. It hurt that she hit me. You know <laughs> that makes sense? Yeah, know. It hurt that it came from her. Like, oh, you hit me because it wasn't often. So it was like, oh, you really feel some type of way about XYZ or whatever happened. So it was, so, it was more so emotional. It wasn't really a pain behind it. Yeah. So I guess what's some advice your mama gave you on how to like treat a man? Mm-hmm. Ooh. Treat them bad and sneaky. No, I'm just playing. <laughs> um, that's a good one. Cause my mom, she was um, she recently got married. Ooh, I don't want to get the date wrong, so I'm not even gonna say it. Maybe it was like six years ago. It's not in the two digits yet, so it's one digit. So it's it's kind of crazy seeing her 
before she was um married, like seeing her single life and seeing her married now. Like it's two completely different people. <laughs> so I think the advice that she gave me, my favorite advice from my mom with any situation is to basically make sure like you taken care of. And by that, I don't mean like depend on a man, but I mean like make sure you got what you got going on and you did it, you know, you can say that you did it and you're able to maintain it and do it yourself. If a man comes along, that's just good for help, you know? Like, I wouldn't say, don't depend on a man. I'm not gonna say that. She she did tell me not to depend on a man. I think two ways it can be good and it can be bad. She said not to depend on anybody, but I think for certain things that you, you have to depend on your partner. Like, that's what y'all, that y'all building a team, you have to do that. So my mom, mom's best advice with anything was to be independent, but, that goes to an extent. Well, I mean, um, I guess being independent is like necessary, like for like a certain age. But then if you're trying to marry young, it's like you have to, you got to let that go because y'all just gonna end up bumping heads. Right? Yeah, but I don't think necessarily you have to let it go. I think both of y'all should be your own individual person, but y'all be able to come together as a team. It shouldn't just be. I'm getting my way, I'm getting my way. Y'all have to be able to know yourself first and then come together. You feel like you um more dominant than a guy? And with certain men and certain people, yeah. But no. Like, I'm able to comfortably live in my feminine era now because I have somebody that's willing to do the parts that he needs to do to make me comfortable and feel more feminine. So... In former relationships, yeah, I might have been more dominant because I'm handling my stuff and I'm my own person. But now I'm able to work with somebody as a team, so we're handling things together. So I could be more chill and more comfortable with certain things. So could you be with a guy like who don't work or? Why would I do that? <laughs> <laughs> Why would anybody want to be with somebody that don't work? Work is not necessarily. Even if it's like a nine to five or entrepreneurship, you you have to put in work somewhere. If you just a slob, that you can't do that. Like I'm saying, some women they just get a guy because he's cute. Like they just like the way he looks. So that's that's high school just stuff. Deal with it. No, it's grown women still. Deal with <laughs> oh well, to me that's high school stuff. I can't. Mm -mm. Just to say they have a man. I know what you're talking about too, because I know people like that. But no, nah, we both got to be putting in work. We both got to be knocking our goals off or achieving and accomplishing something because we have to have something to talk about. I don't have nobody. I don't have anybody in my circle that doesn't have a job and doesn't have anything. Like, we don't have anything in common. You know what I mean? Yeah. But you know what's crazy? Some unemployed people be, like, the most talkative people. Like, yeah. <laughs> so they that, have something That's to talk just, to. like, the, uh, the brokest person in the room usually be the loudest. You heard that before? Yeah, that's kind of like that. But, no. Nah. You'll be able to talk to somebody, especially with what we do in our field. You'll be able to talk to somebody and be able to weave through what they got going on, especially here in Atlanta. They might sneak you a little bit, but you'll be able to weave through and figure stuff out. Yeah, the first time I heard that, um, my mama, I told her, like, me and my homeboy picked up some girls. So I would have a car and a job, and he'll be broke, but he was the most talkative. <laughs> yeah. And she was like, when she was young, the broke guy be the most talkative mm -hmm. guy. Mm -hmm. So, um... Okay, um, a time you might regret saying you was okay when you wasn't. Mm, let me think about that one. Maybe emotionally, um, I'm getting comfortable with talking to people more about my feelings. I grew up an only child. I do have a little sister now. Um, on my dad's side, but I grew up an only child mainly, so just being able to um, talk about my emotions, I'm getting more comfortable with that, or how somebody made me feel instead of just distancing myself. So talking about stuff. Yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. So question about feelings. Okay. Last time someone didn't understand your feelings, so they felt like uh, they were invalid. That happened every day. No, I'm just like, <laughs> no, um, I mean, that happens every once in a while. It's just a communication thing. Um, 
and that's really with anything that can be with your partner your family your friends yeah just communication and i'm really i'm really big on that i'll over talk in order for somebody to understand what i got going on or what i'm thinking so yeah communication is big with anything with any relationship so like do you um allow your man to like uh cheat sometimes is that okay like no nah. why would we do that we can communicate why what you got going on <laughs> like I'm saying if he a good guy, like you could reward him with like side bitches. Uh, you know that's always wonderful. Yeah, that's always wonderful. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I never side piece. Like if any, if we got anything going on, I rather we talk about it. Like if you feel like you want to go cheat, we don't need to be together. We need to have open communication. Now, if you want to have a threesome or something like that, okay, we'll talk about that. But. Just going out and cheat, I don't tolerate that. Because I know what I bring to the table. So it's like, no, nah, you want to cheat? Well, what else you lying about? And I said, sit, if I accept him for cheating, then I said, think, well, man, what else is he doing? Uh, we we having sex. Well, then he put her in this position. I'm not going through that. <laughs> like, no, nah, cheating not okay. But if you want to explore the options or something, just come and talk to me about it. Okay. So I guess... I guess when I be looking at like when girls uh, bring in other girls, when the guy leaves, you be like, damn, he really just didn't want your ass. Like, he yeah. didn't really have to cheat on you, so. I mean, I think everybody, because I, I can see how you can see it both ways. I can see how you can see it like that. Or if, more so, because that's so funny, because I had a um, conversation with my uh, hairdresser, and we were talking about threesomes and stuff like that. I think the woman has to feel comfortable with picking like I feel like you could tell when a woman just doing it to make her man happy you know like oh I want to keep him so let me just go ahead and do this but know yourself know what you're comfortable with and what you're not comfortable with if you don't want to have that threesome don't have that threesome but <laughs> like do what's comfortable for you that's all I can say on that topic yeah. so, so are you a woman who like the girl can't look better than you or she can look I never had a threesome, so I can't really, I can't speak on that. We go to the next question, though. <laughs>